हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू द कोर्स ऑन मैकेनिकल वाइब्रेशंस द यूनिट नंबर थ्री डील्स विद फ्री डायम्पड वाइब्रेशंस एंड द लेसन नंबर टू डील्स विद फ्री वाइब्रेशंस विद विस्कस डैम्पिंग सो इन द विस्कस डैम्पिंग देर इज एन एलिमेंट एडेड टू द स्प्रिंग मास सिस्टम एज द पिस्टन सिलेंडर एंड एज वी हैव सीन ऑलरेडी इन द विस्कस डैम्पिंग योर फोर्स इज प्रोपोर्शनल टू द वेलॉसिटी वेर इन वी कैन put the proportionality constant at at c where is c is damping constant or damping coefficient which will have unit as newton second per meter now if i are applying the newton second law of motion to the system it is shown here the equation of motion becomes mx double dot is equal to minus cx dot minus kx if we rewrite this it will be mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx is equal to 0 so for this system if you draw the free body diagram there will be a inertial force as mx double dot which will be downward and the spring force which will be upward as kx and the damping force which will be upwards as cx dot so if we write down and if we apply the newton second law of motion to this system it will be written as mx double dot is equal to minus cx dot minus kx or it can be rewritten mathematically as mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx is equal to 0 so for this if we assume the solution it will be x of t is equal to c into e raised to st and we can get the solution x dot t as s into c into e raised to st and x double dot t can be s square into c into e raised to st if we put the values of x x dot and x double dot into the equation of motion we get m square plus cx plus k is equal to 0 if we solve this equation we get the roots as s12 is equal to minus c plus minus under root of c square minus 4mk upon 2m we can rewrite the same as minus c by 2m plus minus under root of c by 2m square minus km If we assume the solution as x one t is c one into e raised to s one t and x two t as c two e raised to s two t, so we can rewrite the equation x of t is equal to c one into e raised to c by two m plus under root of c by two m square minus k by m plus c two into e raised to c by two m minus under root of c by two m square minus k by m t. where c1 and c2 are the arbitrary constants and which are to be determined from the initial conditions now if we want to have critically damping if we want to get the critical damping coefficient cc you have to make the radical equal to 0 so cc by 2m square minus k by m is equal to 0 so cc is equal to 2m under root of k by m it can be rewritten as 2m omega n which can be also written as 2 under root km there is another very important term as damping ratio zeta which is ratio of damping coefficient to the critical damping coefficient c by cc it can be written as with some mathematical formulation c by 2m which is equal to c by cc into cc by 2m which can be written as zeta into omega n so we can finally write down the equation as x of t is equal to c1 into e raised to minus zeta plus under root of zeta square minus 1 omega nt plus c2 into e raised to minus zeta minus under root of zeta square minus 1 omega nt now s1 and s2 are again the roots and it is dependent on to the value of damping ratio zeta now out of which for only zeta value lesser than 1 that is for under damp system only we get the vibratory motion so the roots are rewritten as s1 is equal to minus zeta plus i into under root of 1 minus zeta square into omega n and s2 is minus zeta minus i into under root of 1 minus zeta square omega n if we do the mathematical reformulation we get the value x of t as x into e raised to minus zeta omega nt into sin of under root of 1 minus zeta square omega nt plus phi or x of t which is equal to x0 into e raised to zeta minus zeta omega nt cos of under root of 1 minus zeta square omega nt minus phi 
wherein the constant c1 dash c2 dash x phi and x0 and phi0 are the arbitrary constants and which are to be determined from the initial conditions now the initial conditions which are most probably written as the displacement at time t is equal to 0 is assumed to be x0 and velocity at time t is equal to 0 is assumed to be x dot 0. So, from this we get the value of c1 dash as x0 and c2 dash as k0 plus zeta omega n x0. We get the value of c2 dash as x dot 0 plus zeta omega n x0 upon under root of 1 minus zeta square omega n. By putting the value of c1 dash and c2 dash we get the total solution for the vibratory system and here you can see this represents a decaying damped harmonic motion with an angular velocity of under root of 1 minus zeta square omega n is also known as damped natural frequency and the factor e raised to minus causes the exponential decay. So, from the graph you are able to figure out that how the amplitude of vibration is decaying. On to the x axis we have time and on to the y axis we have the x as the amplitude. So, for the vibratory system with viscous damping the vibration of vibration amplitude is decaying exponentially. For the logarithmic decrement that is natural logarithmic of ratio of two successive peaks or troughs is nothing but logarithmic decrement. So, now for free vibrations with viscous damping we are interested in by how much amount the vibration amplitude is decaying. So, we are interested in rate of decay. So, you have to determine rate of decay from this you can determine the damping constant for this you have to assume the solution for the under damp system. So, we can write down x1 by x2 as x0 e raised to minus zeta omega nt into cos of omega d t1 minus phi 0 upon x0 e raised to minus zeta omega nt cos of omega d t2 minus phi 0. So, from the graph you can see we have taken the amplitude x1 at time t is equal to 1 and amplitude x2 at time t is equal to t2 and the delay in that time period is rewritten as t2 is equal to t1 plus tau d. So, it can be rewritten as t1 is equal to it can be rewritten as t2 is equal to t1 plus 2 pi by omega d. And if we do the reformulation we get x1 by x2 as e raised to minus zeta omega n t1 upon e raised to minus zeta omega n t1 plus tau d and this is equal to e raised to zeta omega n tau d by applying the natural log onto the both sides we can get the value as delta which is equal to ln of x1 by x2 which will be equal to zeta omega n tau d which can be written as zeta omega n into 2 pi by under root of 1 minus zeta square omega n which is also equal to 2 pi zeta upon under root of 1 minus zeta square and this delta is nothing but the logarithmic decrement and which is more useful to find out the value of damping coefficient th for that vibratory system. So, this is having and very much known application into the shock observers. So, what is the damping coefficient possessed by the oil in the shock observers can be calculated with this method. Thank you.